Hello dear students, Namaste, welcome back, how are you all? Yes, with the hope you people are doing good and your family members are safe. So today I am starting the today's session on accounting for subsidiary companies, uh, sorry, holding companies. So in the previous session you understood the meaning of subsidiary company and holding company and group and advantages, disadvantages and consolidated statements, advantages and features of consolidated statements. Okay. So today we are going to understand few uh, terminologies which are very, very essential and important while solving the problem. Okay. So let us understand one by one. So number one is wholly owned subsidiary companies only owned subsidiary companies so this is one of the uh, important uh, topic which you should know only owned subsidiary company means the complete rights on the company is held by holding company the parent company will have 100 percent ownership of another company so that is called only owned subsidiary company so when when all the shares when all the shares of a subsidiary of a subsidiary company company are held by held or held by or owned or owned by the holding by the holding company by the holding company so the subsidiary the subsidiary company is known as is known as wholly owned wholly owned subsidiary company wholly owned subsidiary company that's all when a parent company completely owns the shares of the acquired company so that is called wholly owned subsidiary company so next let us understand partly owned partly owned subsidiary company subsidiary companies see what is this partly paid means partial shares uh, of that company is acquired by the parent company that is called partly owned company when a majority when a majority of shares majority of shares majority of shares but not but not all the shares but not all the shares of a subsidiary of a subsidiary company subsidiary company are owned or owned by the holding company holding company the subsidiary the subsidiary company is known as a partially partially owned partially owned subsidiary company partially owned subsidiary 
company okay so fine so next the topics which we are going to understand now so that is all very very important while solving the problem okay so next is minority share holders are outside shareholders or outside shareholders minority shareholders are outside shareholders to whom we call as a minority shareholders or outside shareholders c in case of partly owned in case of partly owned subsidiary subsidiary company besides besides holding company besides holding company there are others holding shares in the shares in the subsidiary company that means a uh, parent company that is holding company will have partial share and other uh, partial will be held by some other people who are outsiders okay so that outsider uh, the people one who holds the share which is less than 50% so they are called as outside shareholders or minority shareholders okay so subsidiary company so the outsiders holding less than as i said less than 50% less than 50% of shares in the subsidiary company are called are called as outside shares holders shareholders or minority shareholders minority shareholders okay understood yes so let us understand next minority interest or outsider interest what is that mean so how we consider that okay minority interest or outsider interest minority interest or outsiders interest what is this exactly see while preparing the uh, uh, holding company accounts we use this terminology that minority interest what is this minority interest see the claim the money which we are supposed to pay to them so while calculating assets net assets so we should give uh, we should give some uh, portion to them so that is what we call it as a minority interest so let us understand what is minority interest minority interest refers to the claim the claim on the minority on the minority the test on outside shareholders on outside shareholders in the 
net asset in the net assets in the net assets that means that means assets that means assets minus liabilities assets minus liabilities of the subsidiary company of the subsidiary company of the subsidiary company so as the net asset as the net asset of a subsidiary of a subsidiary company is is always is always equal to its share capital equal to its share capital reserves reserves profits profits etc etc belonging to belonging to whom belonging to shareholders belonging to shareholders so the minority the minority interest interest the minority interest can also be can also be expressed expressed can also be expressed as the claim as the claim of the as the claim of the minority minority or the outsiders outside shareholders shareholders in the share capital in the share capital reserves reserves profit profit etc of the subsidiary of the subsidiary company of the subsidiary company belonging 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 to its shareholders to its shareholders okay so this is about minority interest so next majority interest or holding company interest you have to understand okay majority interest or holding company interest so this is minority interest which is held by outsider so next majority interest we always term this as a you know um term this as a holding company interest only or holding company interest okay so try to understand this what exactly the meaning of this because uh, while solving the problem you should know everything so that is why i am recording and posting it see majority interest refers to refers to the claim the claim or the interest or the interest of the 
హోల్డింగ్ కంపెనీ హోల్డింగ్ కంపెనీ ఇన్ ది నెట్ అసెట్స్ నెట్ అసెట్స్ ఆఫ్ ది ఆఫ్ ది సబ్సిడైరీ కంపెనీ ఆఫ్ ది సబ్సిడైరీ కంపెనీ ఆఫ్ ది సబ్సిడైరీ కంపెనీ ఆర్ ఇన్ ద షేర్ క్యాపిటల్ ఆర్ ఇన్ ది షేర్ క్యాపిటల్ ఆర్ ఇన్ ది షేర్ క్యాపిటల్ రిజర్వ్స్ ప్రాఫిట్ ఎట్సెట్రా ఇట్ ఈస్ ఎగ్జాక్ట్లీ ఆపోజిట్ ఆఫ్ మైనారిటీ ఇంట్రెస్ట్ ఇట్ ఈస్ అవుట్ సైడర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ హోల్డింగ్ కంపెనీ పార్ట్ ఓకే సో దట్ ఈస్ వాట్ ఎట్సెట్రా ఆఫ్ ది సబ్సిడైరీ కంపెనీ సబ్సిడైరీ కంపెనీ belonging belonging to its shareholders belonging to its shareholders belonging to its shareholders the interest of the holding company the interest of the holding company of the holding company in the net asset in the net assets of the subsidiary company of the subsidiary of the subsidiary company of the subsidiary company is called is called the is called the majority is called the majority interest interest majority interest as the holding company as the holding company as the holding company constitutes 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 the majority the majority shareholders majority shareholders of the subsidiary company of the subsidiary company so that is exactly is called majority interest of holding company okay so next is uh, important terminologies we use while solving the problem that is pre acquisition period pre acquisition period so what is this pre acquisition period and why we consider see before the company takes up the holding company takes up subsidiary company before that the, in the financial period so that is called a uh, pre acquisition period before acquisition is called pre acquisition okay it is the period it is the period which which falls which falls on or before which fa- falls on or before the date before the date on which on which the shares of the on which the shares of the shares of the subsidiary company subsidiary company subsidiary company are acquired 
are acquired are acquired by the holding company acquired by the holding company acquired by the holding company so that is what we call it as a pre acquisition period so now let us understand what is post acquisition post acquisition so it is after the acquirement period that's all post acquisition period after the acquired period is called post acquisition okay post acquisition post acquisition period period is the period is the period is the period which falls after which falls after which falls after the date the date on which on which the shares of the shares of the shares of the subsidiary subsidiary company subsidiary company are acquired or acquired by the holding company acquired by the holding company acquired by the holding company so next is pre acquisition reserves and post acquisition reserves pre acquisition reserves pre acquisition reserves so what is this pre acquisition reserves any reserves any reserves any reserves appearing be clear appearing appearing in the books in the books of subsidiary in the books of subsidiary company in the books of subsidiary company in the pre acquisition period pre acquisition period pre acquisition period is treated is treated as as pre acquisition pre acquisition reserves reserves of the subsidiary subsidiary company subsidiary company so next let us understand post acquisition if it is pre acquisition then post acquisition whatever reflected in the account that is called post acquisition reserves that's all not much difference post acquisition reserves any reserves any reserves appearing in the books appearing in the books in the books of in the books of the subsidiary subsidiary company company in the in the post in the post 
acquisition in the post acquisition period in the post acquisition period is the post acquisition reserve is the post acquisition reserve reserves of the subsidiary of the subsidiary company of the subsidiary company okay so next is next is pre acquisition profit and post acquisition profit so let us understand pre acquisition profit so same thing we have uh, reflected as a reserves so now we are going to write it as a profit in the place of reserves so that is called pre acquisition profit the p and l account the p and l account the p and l account credit balance credit balance the p and l account credit balance standing in the books standing in the books of the subsidiary company of the subsidiary company in the pre acquisition pre acquisition pre acquisition period pre acquisition period is called is called the pre acquisition profit is called the pre acquisition profit that's all so next post acquisition profit what is this post acquisition profit post acquisition profit the profit earned earned by the subsidiary company subsidiary company subsidiary company in the post acquisition period in the post acquisition period in the post acquisition period is called is called post acquisition profit that's all post acquisition profit of the subsidiary company subsidiary company okay so this is called post acquisition profit so next is pre acquisition loss post acquisition loss uh, so i believe you have already know that uh, that is exactly in the place of profit but the loss will be reflected in the debit side of p and l account so post acquisition loss is incurred by the subsidiary company after the acquisition period so that is called post acquisition so let it be uh, simple and uh, i'll write it pre acquisition loss pre acquisition loss so the loss will be p and l account debit balance correct the p and l account 
debit balance debit balance standing standing in the books of a, the subsidiary company subsidiary company in the books of the subsidiary company during during the pre acquisition pre acquisition period pre acquisition period is called is called the pre acquisition pre acquisition loss pre acquisition loss next is post acquisition loss correct post acquisition loss post acquisition loss means what so the loss incurred after the acquirement so the loss incurred the loss incurred by subsidiary by subsidiary company in the post acquisition period post acquisition period is called post acquisition loss of the subsidiary company subsidiary company okay so next is goodwill or cost of control goodwill or cost of control goodwill or cost of control so these are all terminologies we use while solving the problem and they might ask sometimes for five marks in your exam for theoretical part so that is why we are giving a bit importance to it so try to understand the excess of the price excess of the price paid by paid by the holding company paid by the holding company for the equity shareholders of the subsidiary company of the subsidiary company the excess of price paid by the holding company for the equity shareholders of the subsidiary company over the paid up value of those shares of those shares is generally considered generally considered as the cost of control payment for the goodwill so any extra payment which is made on the shares then the actual price so that as we call goodwill in this lesson so in this unit 
नेक्स्ट कॉस्ट ऑफ कंट्रोल कॉस्ट ऑफ कंट्रोल और गुडविल और गुडविल ऑल्सो ऑल्सो इनक्लूड्स ऑल्सो इनक्लूड्स दी एक्सेस the excess of the price excess of the price excess of the price paid by paid by holding company paid by holding company for the preference shareholders preference shareholders preference shareholders preference shareholders preference shareholders of the of the subsidiary company of the subsidiary company over their paid up value over their paid up value okay so last one even the excess excess of the price excess of the price paid by paid by the holding paid by the holding company for the for the debentures of the subsidiary company subsidiary company over there paid up value paid up value is considered is considered as cost of control और गुडविल सो थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग यू शुड रिमेंबर सो दट इज द एक्सेस प्राइज विच इज पेड बाई द होल्डिंग कंपनी फॉर इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर्स ऑफ द सब्सिडरी कंपनी ओवर देयर पेड अप कैपिटल सो दट इज वी कॉल इट एज अ कॉस्ट ऑफ कंट्रोल और गुडविल सेकेंडली द एक्सेस ऑफ द प्राइज पेड बाई द कंपनी फॉर द Preference shareholders of subsidiary company, normal than market or price, so that is existing price. Thirdly, a debentures holders subsidiary company will get overpaid it. So these three is considered as cost of the company or goodwill of the company. So these are the very very important points which you should remember. So while uh, before solving the problem, so try to. understand these concepts because uh, once we start uh, dealing with start uh, you know uh, solving the problem we are going to use all these terminologies which i have used here so uh, that is where it is bit important so that is where i have covered here in the video so from next class onwards i am going to start the solution part you know problem and solution part of holding company accounts so along with these steps so we need to uh, know that how we are going to evaluate and all so after that immediately we are going to start the problem and solution part of the holding company so uh, in the next video we'll come up with the problem and solution so i'll come back with one more video on a holding company accounts with practical problem and solution till then take care see you soon bye bye stay safe stay home take care of yourself and your family members bye bye see you
and copy this to your notes without fail so the entire thing which i have shown in two consecutive videos about the theory part of holding company so you should uh, record it in your notebook okay so do it without fail bye bye